I'm Parson Brown, and this is a very special Frame of View presentation. It's not every day that one has the opportunity to interview their favorite musician one-on-one. -on -one. It's also probably even less likely that at 86 years young, you'd pick up the phone and meet your biggest fan for the first time, calling you out of the blue from the other side of the world. But most people aren't like me. I will literally call anyone. And the majority of legends aren't as welcoming as Mary Schneider. We proudly present a Frame of View exclusive, a conversation with Mary Schneider, the legacy of Australia's yodeling queen. You've got to come to Aussie land one day. I will. It's a beautiful country. And you know what? We're bigger than America in size. It's true. Not in population. Yes, but geographically you are larger than the uh, continental United States. <laughs> That's true. Yeah, but not... But, but not in not in population. I love America. I've been many times. I love it over there. Well, you have, uh, you've performed all over the world. You've been on stages everywhere, and it, you know from all through Europe. And you've you've performed in the United States, and you've been a voice uh, performer for so long. You may not even know that. You were also uh, played regularly on my front porch in uh, in Appalachia in the United States from my parents' front porch in Virginia very many times, and then I tried to repeat your your work. Isn't that lovely? That's really lovely for me to know that that somebody is playing it and liking it. That's really good, darling. So this was in the day where. Uh, you know, technology was different. We both agree that we're not the most tech-savvy people. Um, but I first heard your uh, your music and, and your yodeling when I was a, um, a young... I was a kid and growing up in Appalachia and was just in awe yeah. of what you're able to do. And... I used to call my friend on the phone who lived, you know, on the other ridge, just on, like, the other side of the mountain. Oh, really? And be like, hey, can you hear me do this? Hello? And he'd be like, yes, I can hear you. I was like, but can you hear me with the phone down? Hello? And he'd be like, yes, I can hear you. I was like, <laughs> good. So part of what I really wanted to talk to you about is the history of yodeling and how it originated and you know like how it's progressed and i feel like you're the person i need to ask well i don't know as much as uh someone in england who who really can yodel really well and he doesn't record or anything but he has a radio program and he knows everything about every yodeler in the world oh my god he's and he he sent me an email about all this, so I'll just re revi revise it in my in my mind. What he told me, lovely man, mm. lives in London. Excellent. Mm. It's lovely. I'm so far away. We're so far away from the world here, really. In one way, it's good. In one way, it's bad. You know? So what do you mean by that? Too, we're too far in the plane, you know, to go. Mm. I'd be over there all the time. Like you can, you can get to other countries very quickly. We can't. We're a far away. I don't know. Right now I'm thinking about uh, getting to you. <laughs> I wish you could come over here. You'd like it. We've got beautiful, beautiful beaches and everything. It's a beautiful sunny day here. What's the weather like there? In, in, in Sydney, it's a beautiful sunny day today. Well, at this point, it's uh, in the high 80s. I'm in Los Angeles, by the way. Um, it's warm. I'm not much of a beach person because, you know, sand and I don't get along. But uh, <laughs> <laughs> so it's been such a 
an experience working with with you from Australia because you're the first person that we've worked with internationally on this podcast and hopefully we can joke about it now that um we miss i miss i miscalculated our uh, original appointment oh don't worry about that does one it's a it's a normal thing that happens because you don't normally ring australia and it's just the time zone that's all no worries true i don't normally but it seems that lately i've been ringing and been rung by australia quite more often than not and i i appreciate it you can call me anytime and i love talking to you oh well that'd be good we could do that now and again i think i'll send you sent you a lot of stuff that i could particularly that that show in hanover it's um it was fantastic i had world artists on that show a lot of stuff i did in germany was very good and they knew what they were doing there it was wonderful. And they asked me they asked me to tour with that symphony orchestra. They were fantastic. A man came and he said, I've just had uh, on not Andre Andre Bocelli, yes, yes um, touring and we'd like you to tour all over Europe and uh, everywhere, just doing you know, classical things with an orchestra. But at that time my husband was not well, and he had cancer, so I had to get home as quickly as I could, and I didn't want to leave him. So it was a, at that time it was the wrong time for me to do it. Of course, more important to look after my darling. And we've talked a little bit about how you know you've had a very successful career, but also been you know committed to your family, and you know managing that has had to have been been tough yeah well my family always came first i didn't uh, want to go on tours and leave my daughter take away from school and all that stuff i was first of all a mother you know did you have a look at uh, uh melinda anything on the net yes i've been aware of melinda uh for a while because as i mentioned you you know you come from a very talented family um, could you tell me about your roots as, uh, you know, your upbringing and, and how music sculpted who you, who your family is and how that's, like, become part of your legacy? My mother and father were both musical. On mum's side, it was, uh, you know, uh, they had pantomimes and things and all her brothers and sisters. And her father was a Gilbert and Sullivan opera singer. So probably how I got the the range that I have in my voice from him it's all genetic and isn't it really so uh, anyway just music was terribly important and when we were children and I told you my mother had five of us under 10 and my father died and I was only one 13 months old I don't remember my father I wish I could have but you know that he could yodel <laughs> probably mum told me but uh, we as children, we were all around the dinner table singing in harmony. Uh, every night we'd do that. And it would be about nine o'clock before we left the dinner table because we loved singing together so much. That's beautiful. I think that's wonderful. My mother was very proud of her five children who were all musicians. My my older brother was a beautiful jazz guitar player and uh, and the other one was a bass player and my other sister got married a few times but she was a good singer and Rita my sister was fantastic wonderful comedian played beautiful guitar I play a piano accordion banjo and uh, guitar and uh, piano and stuff you know you are also quite funny yourself um you know in a lot of your work you uh uh, you exhibit a whole lot of character. You know, you've got not just, you're not just a yodeler, you're, just, you're a singer, but you also uh, bring different methods and different uh, energies to the th things that you've recorded over the years. And I've noticed that because I've been studying your stuff. So that's amazing. Yeah. Well, I had a lot of, a lot of years with my sister. She was, She's a great songwriter too, and oh god, I miss her now. We did everything mm -hmm. together, you know, 
and uh, you know, I could talk to her musically and she understood. Uh, you know, it's just one of those families where we um, we just lived for music, I think. I don't know. We, we, were, we weren't, we were quite poor because during those early years, you know, it wasn't, um, wasn't easy when I was a little kid. Do you think that you communicated better as a family because you had that communal love and appreciation of, of music? Well, I do. We were very close because we all always had to work every hard, very hard as children to try and get some more money in for my mother as that was a very bad time when I was little. And uh, mum did her best because she was a wonderful dressmaker and uh, she worked long hours and everything and looked after us all. And I think about it, you know, she was amazing, lived till 91, and we all absolutely adored her because she was a just when she was only 38 when my father died and she didn't want to marry again because she didn't want us to have a, uh, a stepfather, old-fashioned, of course. She thought it wouldn't be good for her little ducklings. To have, I understand. To have a, a stepfather. <laughs> Beautiful mum she was. Very musical too. Anyway, that that you know we, we did we did stick together on things, yes, because of our childhood. How did you figure out that of this musical family that? that you were the yodeler how, how did that evolve I, I i just need to know well when i was about six years old we used to listen to uh, the early country singers and they always put a little yodel on the end of the, the song or in the middle and then on the end and i said i can do that i practiced as a little kid and then my sister, we lived in Brisbane, in Queensland, and um, my sister said, well, okay, get up in the mango tree and practice every afternoon and get better and get better, you know, which I did every afternoon after school. I love that. You told me that you, that you used to climb into the mango tree, and, yeah. and that's where you taught yourself to yodel. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> and I taught myself to yodel on my front porch in Virginia listening to you, so. <laughs> yeah, that's unreal. And, uh, you know, it's the same sort of thing. If, you know, you learn these things as a child and you never, ever lose it, I think. I just, uh, yeah, it's amazing. But I did, uh, I was always running around the house singing, singing, singing all the time. You know, it's it. I just loved it. And coming home from school, I'd throw my bag across the floor and get straight on the piano. I think you've got to really have that real interest in music to uh, succeed. Yeah. Well, so it was a passion for you. It's and you hmm. you've inspired me. It's a passion for me. But it's a uh, it's a unique community. You know, uh, the yodeling community, so to say. Um, there's not a whole lot of us. No, no, but you'd be surprised. We've got quite a few good yodelers here in Australia. Well, you know, Frank Ifield, he's Australian. Mm -hmm. Well, he was born in England, but he lived here all, well, his, most of his life. And, you know, I remember you, you know. Yes. Frank Ifield. And we have a bit of, we have a, a few yodelers in our country western history here in the United States, here and there. It seems like everybody likes to recirculate the, I went across to wherever, yodel <laughs> <laughs> I went across to Switzerland with all the old, yeah, I know what you mean. <laughs> but what you've done with your career and with your craft is, is different. You changed it well you know what i've got to tell you i actually dreamt 
that idea. I've made country um, albums before that and mm. uh, wrote, wrote some songs and recorded them. I had gold and platinum records, you know. I didn't, I, I'm really a singer. I always think yodelers go around the house going, oh, it's not true. <laughs> <laughs> Because you've got to be a singer, I think, to be able to yodel. But anyway, I had a dream one night and uh, I was walking, because I'm a trained soprano through in my teens and all the twins. See, oh, let me, like right there, that's exactly the point. That you, you have to be trained in some way, I, I think, to, oh, yeah. to understand that, you're, that you have the capacity to yodel because not everybody can do it. Yeah, I know. Well, you know, some people can, and, but anyway, <clears throat> it's one of those things. I think if you can, you can, and if you can't, well, don't. I don't think can be taught. I really don't think so. But if you haven't got that natural break in your voice, where you, you know, it goes from your, your chest to your head voice. Right. You have to go from uh, almost a completely different part of your soul to another place in your soul, just back and forth. That's right. Well, I dreamt this idea, um, and I was walking down the staircase singing an operatic aria of some sort, and I was in a beautiful gown walking down this staircase, but I wasn't singing the aria. I was yodeling it. And, you know, I woke up in the morning, and I said to my husband, I had an unbelievable dream, and I just told him all about it. He said, oh, God, that's funny. So I, we went, uh, and he retired, um, and then we went to live uh, up at the Gold Coast, and then I said, I can't let this idea go. I just wanted to do, try, and I wanted to do something different with yodeling and put it into another genre so that you know, people would appreciate it in another way from country music or Swiss or that. So that's when I did Yodeling the Classics. And I have just done Yodeling the Big Bands a couple of years ago. Yes. Well, Yodeling the Classics, first and foremost, yeah. it was something that the world has never heard before. And I, I know that you always, because we've spoken a few times, you always try to stop me, but I just can't say enough that... Yodeling the Classics changed the way that yodeling was perceived. Oh. Um, and yodeling the big bands was it was beautiful also and really empowering. I, I enjoy it a lot. But yodeling the Classics, you did something there that was so unique. Yeah, well, because, uh, because I'm a musician, I, I got Tommy Tico wonderful wonderful conductor and I said to him look just I want to do these things and I want to yodel them he looked strangely at me <laughs> and but it, it you know I said it will work because I'm a musician and I wrote yodels around the classics like that so I just made them up and wrote them myself another way of doing it so I just wanted that to so and then I did yodeling the classics Volume two, yes, you know, which was successful too. But um, it just it just came to me in a dream. Would you believe that? I do believe it. In the way that you you carried that dream is is awesome. I mean, yeah. you heard a sound that nobody has ever made before, and you found a way to to formulate it and deliver it. And people can't do that. Not everybody can do what you what you've done. Yeah, uh, it's you know it's really quite a thing. But maybe maybe it's because I'm a musician and I knew about uh, you know going up an octave and going up six notes higher or three notes or doing something different with it uh, because I'm a musician. Maybe I don't know. I don't know. Anyway, I, and I had great help from my beautiful sister who, who was a very, very clever songwriter. And, uh, you know, she was my best friend and she helped me. She had a great, she'd ring me and say, I got another wonderful idea for another track. You know, she was, she was beautiful. Oh, I miss it terribly. That's wonderful. Yeah. 
Sounds like a very, a very sweet, wonderful partnership. Oh God, yes, yeah. And uh, you know, when you when you lose somebody that close, life is not not the same, really. Mm. But you know, you have to go on, and uh, I reckon I'll see you again one day. I will. Yeah. Don't make me cry, Mary Schneider. No, 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 no. <laughs> no, that's that's a lovely sentiment. Darling, we all have our loved ones, lose our loved ones, and it's very, very, very hard to bear. So, uh, you know, it depends on yourself if you can stop grieving. Uh, uh, but somebody said to me about grieving, um, they said, uh, oh, geez, I used to remember it, but I can't now. <laughs> Well, on that note, I'll go ahead and and share with you that I've I've grieved for several friends. I've I've lost some really really close people and I I find joy in listening to your tracks. I find like a truly therapeutic, uplifting vibe from listening to you and singing along with you not nearly as well as you do but it's uh oh no it's something that has made me feel good for a very long time and i and you're my go-to in a way you know in a lot of situations oh you're very very you're very sweet person to say that but if i can i think uh, yodeling is a, a very pleasant it makes you happy yeah it's a happy sort of a sound don't you you know. And also when you do it, I think people like to listen to it. And I'm fortunate to be one of those people that was born with a giant Adam's apple that I can do a little bit of yodeling. Um, <laughs> but it feels good. You know, it's it's an exercise that really helps you move energy around, you know, in the world and all the chaos around you. When, and at least that's how it's been for me. Mm -hmm. And learning from from you has truly helped me through a lot of times. And I, I'm not, I do not say that lightly. Um, I'm not just making it up. You make me very happy to think that I've, uh, that you've enjoyed it. Just that's what I want to do, you know. That's what I wanted to do. And teach people, because it seems to be uh, sometimes if people don't understand it, they think, oh, it's a funny sort of a sound and they don't understand yeah. <laughs> what it's all about. And I... Well, you know, of course, it, it's funny. It can be incredibly funny and it's it's fun to be... Uh, th there is a quality of, of humor around like, yes, yeah. I like to yodel, but it really is a craft and you are an artist it is an art form, you know. It's just... Uh, yeah. Yeah, well, I don't know. You're too nice to me. It's a, silly, it's a silly sound that takes a lot of effort and a lot of practice. Yeah. Practice, practice, practice. That's what I say. The, the thing, what, if you want to yodel and, you want to, and you've got a little bit of a break there, you just get in the shower every day and practice in the shower. It's a good place. Yeah, well, that's what you told me preparing for our conversation. And you also told me you were going to challenge me a little bit. So I'm ready if you want to go do a little back and forth. Can I hear anything you've done? It can do. Can I hear now? Well, I'm right here. So could I do a little. We're just getting warmed up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, uh, another one. Let me hear another one. Where you, All where right. you just go, oh, 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 and like, let me hear the voice break. All right. Oh, that's good. It's yeah. okay. Maybe yeah. I don't know. Yeah, that's okay. That's good. You got. You got all the tops in tune then. The main thing is that top one. Oh, that one has got to okay. be in tune. Ooh, you can't go, oh, any, anywhere. Yeah, you got to hit it right on the mark. You have to hit it. Strong. This is why I need you. Okay. 
spot on in tune. Otherwise, it sounds horrible. Oh, well, <laughs> I've only been trying. I've only been trying for 36 years. <laughs> Stop it. Have you? <laughs> All right, what's another one? I know you do. Um, wait a moment, i got to think of one. Lordy, 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 That one. Hold on, let's back that up. You have to do it in another key because I gotta hit it on that same note that it needs to be. The whole lot. <clears throat> oh, like that. Oh, that's it. Lordy, 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 lordy. Ugh. Ugh. Yeah. yeah, that's good. It's very difficult to achieve. No, you're doing fine, don't. You've just got a, a, a breath. It's all breath, too. Breathing. Yes. Okay. All right. Let's go. Let's keep going. I'm with you. Another one. Give me another one of yours. Oh, I don't have... Uh, mine are yours. Um... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's good. <laughs> You're going well. Give me one, another little one you want. Can you do fast? Ole, yeah, go on. Yeah, that's good. good. What's wrong with that? That's good. Is that okay? I reckon that's fine. I'm working on it. You are. Practice makes it. <laughs> but you've been practicing a long time. My God. Yeah, it was just my life. Really? I can't <laughs> believe this. I can't believe it. Do you know that Tarzan was a yodeler? Did you know that? Yes. Yes, I do. And you know who is one of my favorite people that have recreated the Tarzan yodel is Carol Burnett. Really? When she used to do it on her show years ago. I don't know if you've ever seen that, but she would always come out and do... Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I know what you mean. But Tarzan, Johnny Weesmuller, could yodel. He was a yodeler. And uh, uh, he did it. And, and they sped it up. I think he recorded that. And uh, they sped it up, of course, a lot. To uh, mm. it was a very effective. So I, I read a lot about Johnny Weissmuller. Weissmuller, is it Weissmuller, whatever? But originally, they started in country music in in America. Uh, do you want me to tell tell you this? I would love for you to share with me. Okay, I think it started in country music in America. Uh, in the 1800s or the early 1900s, uh, when the Swiss and German people emigrated to America and uh, and brought their cultures with them, yodeling, you know. So so early vaudeville acts started to include yodeling, and some blues singers also sometimes included yodeling in their songs because they heard these wonderful Swiss yodelers. And they, then they'd, they'd sing in the early vaudeville singers. They, they included some yodeling and they were, they were on tour, these medicine sort of wagons those days in the West. Oh, the snake oil uh, yeah, carriages. Yeah, that's right. And they, <laughs> they used to sell their medicines and potions. And yes. the variety artists, the various artists, would provide um, entertainment, you know. And a lot of European yodelers yodeled outside and the people would come running and what's all this about, you know? <laughs> so, so that was, they could sell their potions then in between those artists. Yes. Jimmy Rogers recorded songs with a yodel between each verse. He's a, actually a very wonderful artist who I, I've also studied. Uh, definitely, Jimmy Rogers' work is certainly notable in the in the yodeling community yeah he did sleep baby sleep and i got a feeling called the blues oh lord 
the blue. Yeah, love that. He he did a lot of voice breaking like that, and the blue yodel, and uh, and El- mm-hmm. Elsa Clark and uh, Jack Shea. Uh, they recorded Lovesick Blues, I think, a bit before him. Yes. And uh, Elsa Clark, very talented. Yeah, Elsa Clark, and yeah, oh, well, you know the, all about them, and everybody does. She taught me to yodel. But it was in also in Hawaiian music too. Some of the coolest yodels ever, yeah. Hawaiian and music and and uh, a bit of voice breaking. It was very sweet, sweet, sweet. Hawaiian. I don't know. Uh, there's one. Kamuela yo. That's right. The, yes, uh, that's right. The Kamuela boys. I believe is the name of the group, and they have a yeah. They had a wonderful album, or several of them. They included yodeling in, and it wasn't it wasn't sort of yodeling, not like that. But they did, you know. Yeah, well, they they were like driving down the big island highway, looking for a place to go. There's a sign on the side said there'll be some fun tonight at the Comwell Road. Well, I mean, they did it better, you know, whatever. But I love that song. That's something like that's another one that I like that I've listened to forever. Oh yeah, you've listened to a lot. My God, you're enthusiastic, aren't you, about it? Oh, people have called me worse. <laughs> but do you, do you practice much at home? I mean, you know. It's... Does it annoy your neighbors and all that stuff? So re- in the last several days, my uh, housemates have been very, very accommodating. They've been very understanding. I, um, <laughs> We set some certain hours where I was allowed to yodel and where I wasn't supposed to. And um, yeah, they've been really, oh. they've been really kind. Uh, but yeah, basically in my entire life, everywhere that I've lived, always, every place I've yodeled and it's Good. become a little bit of a problem. <laughs> do, you, do you do any shows? Do you play guitar or anything, an instrument? You know what? I yodel and I play harmonica. Yeah. That's what I got. You don't do blues. <laughs> Lovely. Oh, I do do blues because I moved to Chicago and I was the Virginian in Chicago who could yodel. Wow. And a friend of mine gave me a bag of harmonicas when I left Virginia to go to Chicago. And I was like, okay. And I lived in a boiler room for the first year. And I taught myself to play the harmonica. And I played uh, open mics all over the place. And I met Buddy Guy, the... Uh, wonderful uh blues artist and several others um we had blues fest right outside the door in grant park it was a wonderful time in in chicago and i think that the blues and yodeling have more in common mm. than most people might know mm. it's all very interesting all that you've certainly done a your homework on all about it you know you really have well, it's just it's just what I enjoy. It's something that I love. I love uh I love to hear those sounds. Like I said, they they're therapeutic for me. They make you happy. Yeah. It's a great outlet outlet yes. to just go and bellow out a yodel. <laughs> it is good for you. Yeah, no, it absolutely is. I traveled to Switzerland a few times and one time I have to tell you this. I I was with my grandparents and they're like, what are you going to do? To I was like, I have something that I have to do. I took the day on my own and I walked up the Matterhorn and I yodeled because I just you wanted to do it. had to do it. <laughs> I, I did. I did. I, I did a news, uh, a news clip uh, in, uh, where was it? On the Schilthorn Mountains up there. I still got it all on tape. Oh my God, it was cold. Anyway, I had to go out there with all the snow around me and I did a bit, you know. But there was a, a lady who blew that long horn horn thing. You know? Oh, an, an, an alpine horn. Yeah. 
If I was ever going to play another instrument, that's probably what I... I just haven't ever picked one up because they're like 900 pounds and I don't have one. <laughs> well, I tried. Uh, I tried it. You need a lot, of, a lot of power to do that. Yes. But she was saying... I like that, you know. Oh, mm -hmm. like that, all, all uh, slow sort of yodels like that. And she said, we don't do, uh, but I mean, I go, anything I want to do, you know. <laughs> yeah. We don't, we don't do that. We, we just stick to uh, the, uh, the ones that are, that, that are taught to us, you know. I don't believe that I have actually heard anybody other than you really incorporate the You really, you do that with your tongue. Uh, you know, like that's a fantastic sound. I have not heard that from anybody before you. See, but you just did, you just did it then. Well, I've... Well... <laughs> <laughs> You're spot on, Mel. I think I think you're great. What are you talking about? Don't, don't even knock yourself. I think you're great. Really good. Well, I'm coming to visit you. I'm coming to Australia. We're gonna let's do something. We could do a duet one day. I would love to. I would love to do a duet. Maybe we should do something that could help folks that are um you've you were telling me about the flooding that's been going on in Australia. We've had terrible. We've had terrible flooding here. We've had drought. This is they say about Australia: drought and flooding rains. We've had fire, and then we had oh, and we've been through a lot here. Yeah. Uh, but the floods have been very bad too. You know. Never mind. I think now. Well, I'm glad you're safe. I know that you had to uh, relocate yourself, and that other people. Um, in, in your area have been have been suffering so you've been on my you've been on my mind uh and you know i came from the shenandoah valley in virginia and, and my house was flooded twice completely wiped out um oh isn't that terrible and it's uh you know so it's something that's very dear to my heart so um yeah anytime i hear somebody that's facing flooding and I, I live in Los Angeles now, so I understand what forest fires, yeah. are, you know, how dangerous and awful that can be and the combination. And you lost everything, did you? A couple times. My parents had to rebuild everything uh, twice. Mm. Um, And they did, and they took care of me, and I'm very thankful for them. But the moment that you told me that you had flooding going on, it just, like, it hit, yeah. it hit a point in my you know, in my soul, because I, yes. I understand. And when it all goes down, it's terrible. It's terrible what, what the damage has been yeah. done. No. And cleaning it up, you know, after losing everything, uh, cleaning it up is just... Heartbreaking. Love. Yes, it's, it's degrading to your soul because you just have to root through you know the mess absolutely um so i hope i'm glad that you're okay and i'm you know send all my best to everybody oh no i'm fine i'm in a, i'm in a big city here but uh what the water just down the end of my street and it, that's where captain cook came in and discovered australia right <laughs> i'm in near Bot botany bay quite historical here where i am really but uh my husband couldn't get over that. He said, just down the end of our street. That's where they came through the heads, you know. And uh, in 1770, um, and then in 1778, I think, they, the first fleet came here. I think, that, I think I'm right there. How did you end up in Australia? How did your family migrate to Australia? Oh. Because you're, you're Schneider. Oh, well. Um, my grand, my grand, great grandparents came from Germany, and when I went and and uh, sang over on television shows in Germany, they say you are one of us. You belong here. You are one of us. Your name is Schneider. And I said, well, my 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 grandfather, great grandfather, came here from 
um, Laos and uh, from that country and um, and had two children. One of them was my grandfather, who was only one year old. They, they gave them land here. They gave them land right up in Queensland, right out west, Longreach area. And they were wonderful em immigrants. And uh, I think that's where the elderly might have come from. You know, they were from Germany. Interesting. Those days, they, they worked very hard on the land and all that, you know. And I, I would go up there now and again and see where they came from, where my father was born in Barcaldon, because I was really, we lived in Queensland for a lot of years, all through my childhood and teens, and then came to Sydney. But it, it's definitely, they were really good immigrants. And, and what I've found out about them, how they worked very, very hard those days. Imagine coming from cold Germany to unbelievably hot Longreach. Yeah, wow. It's right up north, very, very hot in the summer. So I don't know how they did that in those long dresses. It was in 1886 that they came here. In those long dresses. <laughs> long dresses in that, in, in that terrible heat there. So... Uh, yeah, that's well. It sounds awful. Every time I wear a long dress in the desert, I hate it. That's a joke, Mary. <laughs> I know that. Anyway, that's what I mean. Uh, you know, I treasure all my heritage from there. I went over and saw a lot of, and then when I did some television there, they uh, they said, "Oh, you've got to come over again because we found some distant relatives." who want to meet you on the next show that we do. But I didn't get back to that that particular TV show again. I should have done that. But, you know, it's amazing. We're so far away. Those days we were so far. It must, I think it took them three months to get here on a ship. That's just, a, you know, just like so incredible. Yeah. And, and I, because it took so much coordination, for us to just have this conversation, uh. you know, um, <laughs> that takes a lot of uh, just so much grit and effort. And, um, you know, mm. folks back then, I don't feel like I hold a candle to them. It's unreal. Well, I'd like to ask you, Mary, first of all, thank you so much for your time. Uh, I think think we're going to wrap it up but i want to ask you one thing what do you feel like the legacy of yodeling should be if you could tell the world mm. like what do you want to share with the world about yodeling oh oh i don't know how to answer that i just want to say it can't be try and be a little bit original in what you do with that yodeling and put it into other areas of music if they can, you know, and just realise it's, it's an art form and something that, and, and don't just try different ways of doing it. That's what I, I think. Yeah, but just enjoy it, enjoy it, you know, because it's, it's you get a good feeling when you do it. <laughs> Yeah. I do. Yeah. Enjoy it. Is there anything anything else you want to tell the world, just in general? Mary Schneider to the world. Is there anything you want them to know? Oh, boy. That's very hard for me to think of something. I don't know. I'm not guaranteeing that the world will be listening, but let's tell them anyway. Uh, oh, dear. Should we yodel? Maybe we should just yodel to the world. I think so. All right. Like, lordy, 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 oh. Like that. And then we say, lady, 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 oh. Oh. Hit that up. Lady. That's perfect. That's good. Working on it. <laughs> you are, yeah. Good. You know, you've got to pat down. You have. Yep. You're pretty good, darling. I just want to say to people who want to yodel, don't have a thing about it and think it's funny 
just enjoy it and do it and uh yeah just en enjoy it you can do wonderful things with your vocal cords if you want to yeah. yes and you know what it's okay for it to be funny sometimes that's all right people think it's funny because uh, it's a great thing to do yeah they do think it's funny but who cares it feels so good it can be good i did i did brown's lullaby in, in yodeling like hola hola Oh, I don't know. I've forgotten. That one, Brahms Lullaby, and a few straight ones. Yes. Uh, which Melinda, my daughter, sang some things with me, too. Oh, you know what's one of my real favorite ones? Is the Hungarian yodel. Oh. Dance, let's dance, Hungarian. Hungarian style. Dance. Yes, I love that. Oh, you, you know. You know, you know all the numbers. <laughs> dance, let's dance, Hungarian style. I got you. <laughs> let's dance with the melody and the smile. Yeah, I know. Love that. Uh, well, Rita wrote a lot of lyrics for that, you know. And then, you know, you can do, that's right, that's how it went. Yes. No, I only have, oh gosh, you have so much reach when you do that with, you know, I just like, it's quite impressive. Oh dear. You, you make me feel good. You make me feel good. Don't say any more to me. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm going to, I'm going to finish this off by saying nice things to you because you have made me feel very good today. And it's been such a pleasure to talk with you. Thank you so much for not just for everything that you've done but for inspiring me personally and for taking time to share your frame oh, of view thank you Tarson. that's sweet of you darling we'll have to talk again on the phone sometime you can call me anytime uh do some new yodels that you want to learn and do i'd like to hear you yeah absolutely and if you ever want to come to my country it'd be wonderful Yes, 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 and yes, and yes. All yes. I've been to your country. You better come over to mine. All right. Game on. <laughs> Thank you, love. And don't, I think you're a really good yodeler, darling. Really good. Oh, I'm nothing in comparison to you, but I appreciate that. Oh, you know, stop it. I don't want to hear that. It's a, that's a huge compliment. You know that that's just so big. I can't. I, I don't want to hear that. You've got it spot on. You know what you're doing there. It's really good, love. Thank you. Thank you very much. Lovely talking to you, Parson. You too. Much love and solidarity. Thank you so much. Thank you and lots of love. Frame of View is produced in Los Angeles, California by Cinemas and the support of Josh Moss, Party Blint Productions, Sugarberry and Associates, Nathan T-Bone Gregory and Drew Data Annan at the controls, edited by Bonnie Ballantyne. I'm Parson Brown.